El Mencho está vivo, afirma Cal Mori el agente de la DEA que lidera la investigación para detener a Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes El Mencho, líder del cártel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Luego de los rumores que circularon sobre la supuesta muerte del capo, el agente de la DEA señaló enfáticamente que sigue vivo, porque así lo ha podido corroborar a través del constante monitoreo que realizan al cártel. Cal Mori y su equipo de agentes especiales de la DEA persiguen al Mencho desde hace varios años. Él está al mando de un equipo cuyo único objetivo es cumplir la tarea que le encomendó la DEA, atrapar al Mencho, por quien el gobierno de Estados Unidos ofrece una recompensa de 10 millones de dólares. Todo comenzó en 2011, cuando Mori realizaba una investigación en Guadalajara, como parte de un equipo especial de la DEA. En ese entonces el objetivo era el Chapo Guzmán, considerado entonces como el narcotraficante más buscado del planeta. En esa época, de acuerdo con el agente especial de la DEA, el Mencho era un jefe de sicarios del cártel de Sinaloa, a quien le habían encargado asesinar a los pistoleros de los Zetas que controlaban Veracruz. Aunque para muchos era un completo desconocido, ya tenía cierta reputación en el mundo de Lampa. En la oficina de la DEA en México, ya advertían que un día sería el nuevo Chapo, y le recomendaron al agente Mori seguir sus pasos. Y fue ese día que comenzó su misión de atrapar al Mencho. Esto es una parte de lo que dijo Keo Mori, el agente de la DEA que lidera la investigación para detener a El Mencho, durante una entrevista en el parque SED Unsolved, with Steve Gregory. We've been busy, is, is, the, is the bottom line. We have a fantastic team, you know, we talked about that last time, and um, we've been busy day and night working this cartel. Um, the, we, we've had some, certainly some accomplishments, and, you know, what I can report is the cartel continues to be extremely strong. Um, unfortunately, we're still in the midst of this, this fentanyl pandemic. Um, we're seeing, you know, record levels of Americans die from it. It's something we're working on hard every day. We've seen, uh, two particularly noteworthy arrests in about the last six months. Um, in September of 2022, uh, we had the arrest of Eric Valencia Salazar. Eric, uh, goes by the moniker L85, one of the founding members of the CJNG cartel. And he was arrested in Mexico, and he is um, pending extradition to the United States on our investigation here in Los Angeles. So that was a that was a fantastic success for us. He's an extremely violent individual, um, an individual involved in in fentanyl production, importation, methamphetamine, and uh, that was a huge accomplishment. And then most recently, sort of a surprise to us was uh, in December. The brother of El Mencho goes by the name Tony Montana. Antonio Oseguera Cervantes uh, was arrested by Mexican law enforcement. That came as a surprise to us. It was a it was a great surprise. It was it was an early Christmas gift for us, if you will. Um, and right before we were kind of getting ready to shut things down for the Christmas holiday, the uh, Mexican government told us that he was in custody and asked us for for our assistance in um, in indicting him here in the United States. We worked tirelessly. Uh, throughout the holiday season, and in January we indicted him on international drug charges, and he is still in custody and also pending uh, extradition. When, when you get notification like that from the Mexican government, are they aggressively pursuing these people on the United States' behalf? They are, and um, you know uh, uh, the administration was down there recently. President Biden was down there. I, I from my understanding from the meetings, the The, the 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 topic of fentanyl and drug trafficking was a major topic and the the cooperation particularly of of late with the Mexican government has been terrific and it was it was highlighted from what we saw in December they made the arrest they very quickly told us we think that the uh, best charges would be in the United States and they asked us to to put charges on them they shared uh, a terrific amount of information with us and allowed us to get that indictment Are you seeing a shift in the way the Mexican government cooperates with the United States? Because traditionally, and at least the way it's portrayed in the movies, uh, everyone in the Mexican government is corrupt. Yeah, that, that's not the case. And it's certainly sensationalized in the movies. Uh, but it, it is not the case that, that everyone in the Mexican government is corrupt. Uh, the reality is, is, is the Mexican government, uh, from, what, from what we see at the DEA and as far as the drug trafficking, um, they... they they are trying to do their best that they can. They're up against a multi-trillion dollar industry in these drug traffickers. Um, much like even frankly, we are at times, they're outmanned. Um, but they are doing the best they can. Are you um, 
only on this particular cartel, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel? Is this the only thing you work on? I would say it consumes 90 plus percent of our time. There, there are other responsibilities that our group of agents, you know, as I described last time, I'm part of a team that consists of intelligence analysts uh, and other agents. And, and there's realistically, there's about 10 of us that do what we do. 90 plus percent of what my group does uh, is focused specifically on this cartel. It's that big? It is that big and it takes that much of our attention. And I can tell you right here in LA where our group sits, that is the hub, that is the epicenter for the investigation of this cartel. What percentage of the fentanyl coming into the United States now is because of this uh, CJNG, CJNG gang? You know, Steve, it's really hard to put a true number on it. Um, CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel, uh, namely, you know, Chapo's sons, the Chapitos, El Mayo, the leaders of Sinaloa, uh, clearly also have a significant role in the importation of fentanyl and meth which are the two biggest threats that we're seeing. Um, where that percentage lies, it's hard to say. It's probably right around um, half and half. Then there's probably also a small percentage of other cartels and groups, gangs in Mexico, and independent traffickers that are also involved. Um, but it, CJNG is a significant uh, share of the, of, the, um, of the region of the United States. Um, how has all of that changed the way you approach and the strategy that you go after these guys? What is it exactly you're looking for? If you're trying to track down El Mencho, and by the way, he still has a $10 million bounty on his head? Yes. How strategically are you trying to find this guy? I mean, it went from marijuana. It seemed like it was easy to find because you had all the, you had grows out there. You had wide open spaces with marijuana plants. And now you just have pill presses that people can pretty much buy anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do it in your garage or in your living room. Yeah. So the, the highlight or the, the urgency for us to catch El Mencho and, and his actors that are around him is greatly thrust forward by the fact that unlike some of the threats in the past, cocaine, marijuana, um, Fentanyl is killing Americans at about 110,000 people a year. That is more people dying in one year from fentanyl than in the Vietnam and Korean Wars combined. And it's about equal to the amount of Americans we lost in World War I in one year from fentanyl. We've gotten to the point where almost every American either knows somebody or knows a family that's been affected by uh, a fentanyl poisoning. Um, and so... The pressure on our group, on our agency, to uh, bring these people to justice. So strategically, when you're looking at how to go after these groups and, and what to do with them, when you sit down and you're talking about you're mostly in an intelligence gathering, you and your team, what intelligence are you gathering? What are you getting that's helping you try to track this guy down? So it's, it's several fold. I, I would say the two biggest priorities are there are a couple of us that are looking at advancing the investigation through identifying the new targets. So we arrested the brother, Tony Montana. Fantastic accomplishment that will save lives. We arrested Eric Valencia Salazar in September. That will save lives. That takes off a significant player that makes high-level decisions for this cartel. It's identifying who is stepping into those roles next and how can we get evidence to indict those people? So that's one of the issues. Another issue is actually trying to stem the flow of the drugs coming into the country. We do that several ways. Part of it is trying to work with the Chinese and the Indians and trying to identify and seize uh, companies in those countries that are sending precursor chemicals that you can buy basically for almost nothing. Get them into Mexico to the tune of 30, 50, 70 tons at a time to produce fentanyl and meth. So trying to stop that. Trying to seize the drugs that are already here in the Los Angeles area. Trying to make sure they don't get into the medicine cabinets, onto the street, into the schools, into people's bodies, because it will kill you. Uh, there is just no doubt about that. So the investigation started, and this is where, this is where DEA, in my opinion, is, is one of the top investigative agencies uh, in the world because this cartel started in 2011 within a few months we started the first case 
So this 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 cartel was barely off the ground when we started the investigation. Talking with Agent Kyle Morey with the DEA Los Angeles office, and he's been talking with us about the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and sort of how our government works with the Mexican government and other governments around the world to stop the flow of illicit drugs, more specifically of late fentanyl. And El Mencho, of course, is at top of mind because he runs one of the uh, world's most powerful cartels. In fact, I was looking at some information here um, where their operational capacity is concentrated in the eight states of Mexico, Jalisco, Colima, Guanajuato, Nadarit, and Veracruz. Um, and then they've got specific areas of Mexico where they do specific things. So drugs are in one part, violence is in another part, but it seems like they're all spread out. But they have ties to criminal organizations in Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Do you have any uh, you know, are you keeping an eye on those things too, or just only with with respect to what happens here in our area? No, I mean we we are definitely keeping track of what they're doing. So, Steve, at the current estimate, the CGNG has actually expanded now to control drug trafficking activities in twenty three states in Mexico. They're up to twenty twenty three states. Wow. Um, of interest and of specific note is they have taken over. Uh, and this is sort of the scarier part, they've taken over sort of the port areas of Veracruz and, and Manzanillo. So those are port cities, major ports. And the, the issue with them controlling the ports is they control all of the precursors coming in and the drugs going out. But they also control... Um, that's significant. That's hugely important because that's the moneymaker. And um, that is, they don't then have to pay taxes. They don't have to pay fees to other criminal organizations to control those ports. They control them directly. It's it's basically like owning the warehouse and the distribution method. You you know, it's it's a it's a lot more valuable if you don't have to outsource anything and they don't. They're completely self-sufficient. They also at this point control many of the uh, vital passageways into the US along the southwest border which is talked about so much. Um, most of those routes uh, including through the Baja corridor which is extremely vital uh, to the Los Angeles area is controlled by the CJNG. But the issue with CJNG having so much drug trafficking control in places like Africa, in Europe, in Australia, in, in, um, in Asia is you look at what the drugs sell for in those countries. It's such a money maker for them. If they can produce a pound of methamphetamine for a hundred or $200 and sell it for, um, $10,000 or something like that in Australia or Africa, you have to look at the amount of money they're making. When that money is remitted back to Mexico, they can buy a lot more political influence through, through corrupt law enforcement and politicians. They can buy a lot more weapons to control more area in Mexico, and they can use that to buy a lot more chemicals to make more fentanyl that's killing more Americans. Speaking of money and the profit margins here, you were quoted in an interview in 2019 with Univision uh, where you believed El Mencho had a net worth of at least $500 million and could also be worth over $1 billion. Has that changed? Has it gotten bigger? I would say significantly bigger, namely because the, uh, the insatiable appetite for methamphetamine has gone up and the prices have gone down dramatically. Uh, as I was saying the other day, wholesale, if you can buy a pound of methamphetamine in L.A. for $500, and sell it other places around the country for much more. The amount of money they're making is staggering. I, I would estimate CJNG is bringing in billions with a B of dollars on an annual basis. Yeah, I think you also said too that that you you estimated that CJNG had assets worth fifty billion. Yeah, I mean, I would I would say that number has gone up exponentially as well. I I believe that estimates. Most recently, of the drug trade in Mexico is worth trillions with a T of dollars, uh, making you know CJNG. Just look at their market share; the money is 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 staggering. Is El Mencho a smart guy? He certainly he certainly has a high level of emotional intelligence. He certainly has uh, a significant amount of of leadership ability. I would say he's an extremely intelligent guy. 
Sinaloa cartel took 20 or 30 years to be built up to what the Sinaloa cartel was. Mencho, as a renegade group, in 12 years, equaled them. Uh, you don't do that and become a billionaire uh, by not being a smart guy. Uh, he's a brutal person. Yes. And and he he's more brutal than uh, Chapo. Yes, I would agree with that characterization. One of the things that I always say, because I get the question a lot, whether it's from our leadership, um, if I'm you know, speaking or advising them on the issue or, or giving an interview, um, wh what is it about this cartel? Why this cartel? And I always say that there's a couple of things, but the, the thing that, is, that scares me the most about this cartel is they have the business sense and the drug tra trafficking capabilities of the Sinaloa cartel, which was vast. But they also have the violence and intimidation tactics of somebody like the Zetas. And when you combine those two things, it's brutal. Uh, they have the brutality and they do things that we've only seen out of uh, Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda. They do those, those types of crimes and that type of violence. But they have the business sense of the Sinaloa cartel or some of the Colombian cartels. That's scary. And that's why they've risen to this type of prominence is they have extreme violence coupled with the ability to make billions of dollars. There had been rumor a while back that he was dead. Mm -hmm. um, do you know for a fact he's still alive? Yes. We, we, we strongly believe that he is still alive. Yes. How do you know that? Well, I mean, you know, Steve, our job, frankly, is to maintain a pulse on what's going on in the cartel. Uh, what's going on with uh, drug trends? Um, what are they trying to do? My last question for you, Agent, uh, if and when you ever get the opportunity to sit across the table from El Mencho, what's the first question you're going to ask him? I don't know. People ask me that all the time. People ask me a lot, you know, you've been chasing him for 12 years. You know, how will you react when he's captured? How will you react if you get to be face to face with him? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I'll react because at a certain point, the chase... Uh, you get so caught up in the chase that it becomes, it just becomes part of your daily life. And it has with me. So I, I don't actually know what my reaction will be uh, when he is captured.